Okay, so here is a video about the motion queuing algorithm, about the, the algorithm that I wrote, about the rig that I built and the software that, that ties everything together. Um, this time it's not X-Plane, it's DCS World. This is an A10, um, medium to, well, medium high performance aircraft. Um, and that's the, f the first thing I'd like to say is um, medium to low performance aircraft work a lot better with motion rigs than super high performance aircraft. Um, the reason is very, very high performance aircraft they have a flight envelope that is just so large that it's very hard for a small rig like this one um, to display the motion properly. On medium to low performance aircraft like this is an A-10 or an, an airliner, for example, or prop uh, aircraft, um, that's quite suitable. So here we are right next to another aircraft and let's just start the simulation right here. And the first thing, the reason why I started right next to that other aircraft is I'd like to show you that formation flying becomes a whole lot easier if you have a motion rig. So if you give control inputs into the aircraft and you, you make these control inputs, you, you get instant feedback. So normally if you are flying on a screen and you make control inputs it takes a few seconds for your eyes to actually see what's going on and versus on a motion rig um, you get instant feedback you know immediately when i make thrust changes i feel immediately whether or not those were uh, enough if it needs more or it needs less so you in a sense you know that a certain control input was the right input or you need to make changes the moment that you make it and that's really important um, so I'm sure you don't see much motion from your perspective right now, but um, you can really feel the aircraft. You can feel every little control input. It's very, very gentle, subtle m movements um, of the rig that, that you feel um, through the, your, your channels of tactile feedback. Um, one thing that I'd like to show you is I'm, I'm really not that bright of a candle when it comes to formation flying, but getting this instant feedback from the motion system allows you for, for very fine control of the aircraft. Just as an example, like don't, don't do this on your own rig, but if you want to gently bump into another aircraft, it allows you to do that. And it's actually quite funny when you get this bump, you, you just take a look at it. So if I approach that horizontal, or oh sorry, vertical stabilizer, ah, ah. <laughs> And it, it's really, really a, a very um, great sense of immersion when you see that 25-ton that aircraft over there and then you actually feel that 25-ton aircraft. Okay, so enough <laughs> joking around. i um, going to do a few maneuvers, uh, thrust full forward, and then trim the aircraft and try to get some clearance. So I'm showing you a few maneuvers. Um, first maneuver would be like a continuous steep turn or constant G constant G turn so flaps are up and um, during a constant G turn if you want to plot out the, the vector diagram of it um, you have a certain lift and the aircraft is flying at a certain angle of attack and lift is perpendicular to the um, the velocity vector of the free airstream that means effectively the aircraft is flying at an angle of attack and then some of that vertical lift that generates the g-load um, is being felt as a forward acceleration uh, it's kind of hard to explain but if, if you know, know what i'm talking about if you, if you studied it um well some of that displays itself in longitudinal acceleration so that means if you pull continuous g-load on the aircraft you will feel that the rig tilts back because of that um, longitude and acceleration. So this is uh, 300 knots and about 3 G, maybe 3.5 to 4 G. And now you should see that the rig tilts back uh, gently and that is, gives a very nice sense of being pushed back into the seat. Like the more I do it, the more I'm being pushed back. Initially I thought this uh, feels a bit like a bug, but once I did the math I found out, no, that's actually just fine. Just like the uh, pilot right now is flying at a significant angle of attack, the, the, the rig is tilted back at a significant angle to, to give you that sense of, of being tilted back, of, of being pushed back into the seat. Okay, what I'd like to show you is just a simple aileron roll. Um, pitching the nose up, rolling to the left, you'll, feel, you'll see that there's a, a response from the rig the moment you enter the roll and the moment you exit the roll. While you are in a continuous roll to the left or right, uh, at a continuous roll rate you feel barely anything. So let's give this a try. Speed is 290 knots. Pitching the nose up. And as I enter the roll, like, what? 
here you can feel something and when I exit the roll or just do another one and stop the roll so this is the moment when you feel something while you're continuously rolling which doesn't not that much um, it's probably a bit more or better visible when I do a four-point roll let's try that so pitching the nose up and then it's one two three four um, that brings me to another point uh, if you have a motion rig for the first time you're trying to set it up um, this pilot induced oscillation and it's something that is so common even in real life aircraft that it's, it gets its own acronym like PIO is what it stands for pilot induced oscillation um, and it's a feedback loop between the airframe and the pilot or, or the hand of the pilot so to speak so if, if you give an input into the aircraft the aircraft will react and push back onto your hand the hand goes to the stick stick to the airframe airframe to the hand that's a close feedback loop so if depending if, if, if you don't put your arms on an armrest and you have a very sensitive joystick and you hold it in, in the wrong way you might end up in in a feedback loop and I'm trying to exaggerate here but if I hold the, 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 the stick in a wrong way, like, like this, and I, once I enter this, this is what it ends up in. I'm not really doing anything here. It's just that if I don't actively try to put my hand on that armrest and limit the motion of my hand, then you might end up in this feedback loop, especially if you have a very sensitive joystick. And the thing is, you, you really want a sensitive joystick for, for good uh, motor control. This is an FSSB R3. You can totally recommend it. Worth the money and there's a lot of stuff you can adjust in it. Um, one thing is sensitivity and the other is uh, like low pass filtering and even in real life aircraft there are either actual dampers dampening the motion like on Airbus aircraft or there are low pass filters in, in the flight control computers that uh, filter out these typical uh, PIO oscillation frequencies. Okay, let's do um, probably a, a loop and what you will see, if you do a loop, and by the end of the loop, by the time you recover and the power is back to idle and you recover uh, from the dive, you dive down into these deeper um, layers of the atmosphere where the air is significantly thicker. So you can quite literally see that by the end of the loop, when I when I pull off back to the to horizontal flight, the, the, the rig is tilted forward. And that is because if there's no thrust on the aircraft and you dive down into the thicker atmosphere, you, f you feel like you're being pushing against a, a wall of air. And it's um, quite obvious if you see it. If you, if you know what to pay attention for, you'll see it. So let's try this. It's 325 knots. Dive down. So let's try to pull up into a loop here. It's 250, 260 knots. And here it's over the top. Power back to idle. Oh, very slow. And as the aircraft now, with the power back at idle, drops down into the lower atmosphere, and we're like 12,000, 11,000 feet, and recovering from that dive, 9,000. Speed is increasing, still no thrust, but now you can feel like I'm pushing against Uppsala. This ever thicker and thicker getting atmosphere. So here I'm back at level flight, but the rig is still tilted slightly forward. And if I bring the power back in to offset that, that drag, you can see how the, um, how the rig straightens up. An interesting maneuver probably would be to do um, a spin. So bring the nose up, let the speed bleed off. So the angle of attack is increasing, gear warning, 100 knots, and now max alpha, left rudder, this is the incipient phase, it's still not stabilized, but at least after one or two rotations, you can feel whoops, how the aircraft stabilizes at a constant angular rate. And now recover, just let go of the stick, opposite rudder, and now you can whoop, this is the moment when the airstream reattaches uh, to the wing and you can you can really feel how it kind of jumps back into its normal state from a deep stall again recovering from that dive i feel like i'm pushing against thicker air this is now three and a half thousand feet 
And if I offset that drag by thrust, now I feel like, okay, sitting back in the seat. Um, one thing I'd like to say about um, hardware, for example, um, a good joystick is always a good thing, like the FSSB R3, totally recommend it. The other thing would be a mouse, uh, not a mouse, but, but a trackball that is attached to the rig. Um, because otherwise, if the rig moves around, that mouse um, will, I, I guarantee you, it'll fly off the rig at some point. So um, a nice uh, trackball that you have in a comfortable position so you can uh, use your PC the way you intend it, even while the rig is in motion, is really important. And the last piece that I totally recommend would be the Motion 4 SIM controller. You can, I'll leave a link in the description of the M4S. You can maybe Google it or Motion 4 SIM. Uh, from Dennis. Uh, it's an awesome controller that, that controls the AASD servos that I have here and it's super smooth and that is by far, I would say, that's the best investment I made on this rig. It really made a change. Uh, so I totally recommend those. I'll put a link in the description. And yeah, make sure you have good hardware um, throughout the rig. For the servos, uh, the joystick, um, the better you have that. Um, on, a, on a rig that is in constant motion, that plays an even bigger role. Um, something else that a rig, a motion rig can provide you very nicely is a feeling of uncoordinated flight. Um, so for those of you who just fly um, recreationally, just for fun, you might not even know what it is, but if there's anyone out there who seriously wants to learn to fly, at some point you're going to have to face uh, uncoordinated flight, and that's when the, the vertical lift vector doesn't go right exactly through the center of the aircraft vertically, but is offset, it's no longer coordinated. and that's very nice about a, a motion rig like this is a jet doesn't have much of uncoordination but if you're flying a prop and you have p factor and you have a high angle of attack you have asymmetric thrust and all that um, that'll give you a very very nice feeling of being uncoordinated so i'm going to try to show you something here by um, making a little experiment again this is for the more serious uh, pilots among you so there's uh, full thrust and I did this experiment actually with a friend on the rig and I, I pulled back one of the thrust levers and I made him like look up and not show him which one it was. He felt immediately which one of these engines just quit. So if I pull back just on one of the engines, I immediately feel, oh, there's thrust here and there's no thrust there. I mean, I just pulled it back, I knew it anyways, but this is just a feeling of, of being pushed over to that one side. So and if I try to keep the wings level and I maintain my heading, I notice that I can't do both at the same time, but if I want to maintain a heading of, what is it, uh, 065, I have to continuously bank the aircraft in one direction, so um, my lift vector now doesn't point vertically through uh, the plane which I'm sitting in, so this is a very nice, um, you feel immediately just a few degrees of, of, of uncoordination in, in your aircraft, that's what you feel immediately, so that's, if you want to really learn to fly an aircraft, this is what your flight instructor will tell you by uh, using the seat of your pants uh, feeling and you really get it on this on this rig. Another thing, if I bring the thrust back to a uh, to a symmetric uh, state, if you have an uh, if your rudder trim is off just by just a little bit, and I might just add a little rudder here. Like this is the amount of of bank angle that I have to use in order to just offset that slight trim in. Oh, even more in in the rudder trim so um, if you're flying a motion rig for the first time uh, there will be no question whether or not your aircraft is coordinated like you see the ball down here like uh, oops maybe I can so if you see the ball down here in the just below the um, attitude indicator uh, I, I bet that's one of the instruments that you that you never look at if you're just a, a casual um, sim pilot but if you have a motion rig, you immediately, you don't have to look at the ball to know whether or not your turn is coordinated. You feel it just the moment it's on, out of coordination. That's what you feel um, right away. It's a very nice sense of, of immersion. And uh, you can literally feel like the aircraft skidding through the air, the air pushing to the side, or like I just did, uh, asymmetric thrust from the engines. There's no question whether or not, or which engine is running. You don't have to look at the indications you feel that this engine is running and pushing and this is no longer but just uh, creating drag it just becomes totally apparent on a motion rig <laughs> and something else for those of you who like to uh, shoot m f uh, bullets at other people um, i wouldn't know for what reason anyone would want to do this but <laughs> there's apparently some of you uh, and this aircraft has a particularly strong gun the go 8 um, gun and it fires off i think about i don't know mm, two to 3,000 bullets a minute, so it's quite a, 
quite a high cadence. And if you squeeze the, thr the, the trigger and that all that metal comes flying out the aircraft, um, you can probably figure that there's a lot of momentum leaving the aircraft and that pushes back on the aircraft. So Newton's second law for those of you who care. Um, and you can actually feel it on the rig. So if I just for shits and giggles uh, fire the gun, we're flying at 340 knots now, diving down. And the moment I shoot the gun, I feel how that, not drag, it's actually opposite thrust from all that metal <laughs> leaving the aircraft uh, in the forward direction pushes me back. So you may want to take a look at the rig and how it tilts and how it, um, how it reacts in the, in, the, in the surge axis. You can see it tilts down slightly. I can feel how it decelerates. Now this is 350 knots, 349, 48. And as soon as I let go of that trigger, now, oh, the thrust is back in. I'm accelerating 350, 355, almost 360 there. So that's another thing. Um, and also, uh, the moment when you when you drop ordnance, like if you let go of a 500-pound a device from your wing, the moment you release it, you, you feel there's a little bump, and the aircraft in that instant feels lighter. If, if, you, if you have a couple of um, bombs that you want to ripple off, and it goes click, 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 you feel the click, 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 <laughs> and you also feel how it lifts up the aircraft because all of a sudden you are um, a couple of uh, thousand pounds lighter. And then there's something else uh, for those of you who really care. Um, if you deflect the ailerons up or down or any other flight control um, surfaces, that um, creates the momentum that, that rolls the aircraft. Yeah, but it also creates drag. And um, it's so subtle that I'm sure you can't see it on the video, but if I deflect the ailerons, um, I also feel the drag, how it pushes, how it pulls me back, because that deflected aileron now creates more drag than an aileron that is in its, its, in its zero position, or even better, in its zero hinge moment position if, if the hydraulics are off. Um, so I may want to try it. So this is a deflected aileron right now. I'm not sure if you can see it among all the other channels. But if you isolate the different channels from the rig, which I totally recommend while tuning, you can, um, you can really see how that deflected aileron pulls you back on the surge channel because there's just drag where there used to be no drag just a second ago. Okay, so that was pretty much it about this uh, part of the flight envelope. I'll make another video about uh, ground operations, taxi, takeoff landing. That's gonna be quite interesting. But uh, for now, um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I will try to answer them as good as I can. I hope you enjoy this and until next time, bye.